Welcome to that Groovy Scoopcast. Your go-to audio hub for all things Scooby-Doo. My name's Derek. And I'm Shannon. And we always invite you back for a Scooby Snack filled time. Well, today we are introducing bonus snacks. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> so this is not our regular episode that you guys expect from us. Correct. We have no review for you today. No review. It is not Sunday. Not Sunday. And we gave you no notice. No notice. No notice. (laughs) (laughs) So just to premise what we are wanting to do here today, Shannon and I agreed that this would be a good opportunity for us to do an episode on a topic that's not necessarily focused on our episode reviews or our trivia or the Mystery Machine match, anything like that. It's just something fun. We wanted to cover something that has been going on recently, and that being the 31-day Scooby-Doo Challenge on Twitter. Mm Mm-hmm. So that Groovy Scoopcast came back from its hiatus shortly after July began, but we hadn't actively participated in the hashtag 31 Day Scooby-Doo Challenge, and we were kind of bummed that we missed out on it, and we didn't want to like do a late start and just throw a bunch of tweets at you out of nowhere. So we decided we would just do our answers right here, right now. You don't if ha- you guys would like to listen to what we have to say. <laughs> you don't have to search through Twitter. It's right here. And, you know, this isn't going to be a regular thing. No. By any means. It's just going to be kind of like a random, here, just bonus stuff. And this is... Have some bonus snacks. This is the Kickstarter for that. Um, So, Shannon and I are going to take turns just reading off the questions of the 31 Day Challenge. And just to premise as well, this was created by at Hire Bradford, Bradford N. Smith, who is, I believe, a screenwriter. Uh, I checked out his Twitter a little bit, and it was really cool seeing, like, the graphic that was created for this challenge. Everybody's been retweeting and circling the specific dates. So definitely go follow him on Twitter at Hire Bradford. Uh, and now it's time to get your mystery on, as Bradford says. Before we start our questions, I will just say there are no pieces of Scooby-Doo media off the table with our answers. So we may spoil aspects of shows here. So... Let's say, like, Mystery Incorporated, if you don't want it spoiled for you, maybe consider skipping this. Just to throw it out there. I also think that we tried not to repeat some of our answers, so that we had a variety of stuff to talk about with Mm this. Um, So I just wanted to throw that out there before we begin. So, Shannon, would you like to ask the first question? What was the first Scooby you remember watching? I... I'm sure that I have watched Scooby-Doo content earlier than this, but I have a very vivid memory of being homesick from school one day. Okay. And a friend of mine, or my mom's friend, lent me the Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island movie. Okay. And I just remember loving it, and I can't think of any Scooby-Doo memories previous to that for some reason. Okay. So it's probably not actually correct, but I think that's my answer, Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. What about you? I remember growing up and watching a pup named Scooby-Doo and Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? Yeah. Uh, So, honestly, I just kind of went through all the episodes and kind of, like, waited for something to kind of hit me. And the one that I have, like, the most vivid memory of is A Night of Fright is No Delight. Oh, with the green ghost. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that that is, to this day, still one of my favorite episodes. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, so that's the first memory I have. So, next question. A Scooby that starts with the first letter of your name. So, yours would be S. What do you have to share for us? Scared a lot and cam a lot. <laughs> All right. I did Diamonds Are a Ghoul's Best Friend. All if right. you guys remember that horrible episode. Yep. <laughs> a Scooby that has more than six words in its title. I actually did A Night of Fright is No Delight. <laughs> <laughs> What about you? I did a scary duel with a cartoon ghoul. Oh, okay. I remember that episode. Um, Day number four, they asked, a Scooby that has a rhyme in the title. I said, a highlight fling with a monstrous thing. I did, if you can't Scooby-Doo the time, don't Scooby-Doo the crime. Ooh. Beagle Scooby-Doo. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. A Scooby where a character has the job you want. So I have the job I want, so <laughs> I just kind of thought of a character who has a different job venture that I had considered. Um, 
fun fact, people, I actually did radio in high school, mm -hmm. and I was a DJ for a year. It was pretty fun. So I actually want to be a radio DJ like Angel Dynamite at K-Ghoul's radio station. Okay. I would love to do that. What about you? Uh, well, I want to be a nature photographer. And so, of course, I had to go with Crystal from Alien Invaders. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh. Now, I could also double as a uh, alien government agent, spy. right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Day number six, your favorite Scooby. What's your favorite? Through the Curtain. Really? Yeah. Why? I, it, Is this because of the... The aspects of it. The like, otherworldly... Yeah. It's just... I don't know. I always... Towards the end... I mean, I love all of Mystery Inc., but yes. towards the end, it really, really got me. Like, especially when, like, hot dog water gets shot in the head and, like, all this stuff is, like, ha like it, it's just, like, end of the world shit is going down. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'll never forget the moment when I'm watching that episode and, like, you hear the gunshots and Velma just looks fat. Yeah. But, like, she can't do anything and Scooby's just, like... Oh no! And Ron was like, "Come on, Scooby! Like we have to go." Yeah, and it's like I just I remember what happened because I think I like yelled or whatever. I was just like, "Oh my god!" They just shot her in the head or wherever, but like she's dead. Right. Like it was just yeah. I chose not to actually do a TV show for this one. Okay. I did because um, I mean everybody always wants to say Zombie Island. Yeah. Obviously, um, I actually did a video game. I did Scooby Doo Night at One Hundred Frights. Okay. That you I, do love. I that. have such a hard on for that video game. I swear to God, that is such a great Scooby Doo video game and. I can't wait for us to talk about it. I'm going to be honest. I remember when you were playing it at your old house yeah. and I like walked in and it was like, and you just sat there and I sat there watching you and it was like, that's how we hung out that day. Cause you just, you but were like playing it. everything that you can love about Scooby-Doo is all in that video game. Yeah. I feel like. So it's just, I think it's the perfect Scooby-Doo video game out there. Mm -hmm. So Derek, what's a Scooby you never grow tired of? I never get tired of watching The Headless Horseman of Halloween from the Scooby-Doo show. Okay. Um, it's another episode where I feel like it has a lot of aspects of Scooby-Doo that I enjoy. It has scooby Dumb in it. Um, I like The Headless Horseman just as a monster. I just, I've just i always liked the, the story of the horseman. Yeah, it's just one that I always liked to watch as a kid. What okay. about you? I actually wrote down all of Mystery Inc., just all of it. All of it. I could rewatch that show over and over and over again. I mean, we have watched we have. that show. I've over I've seen and the again. show in total about five times. Yes. Yeah. So it's just like I could rewatch that. It's just something, and especially once you watch it a couple of times through and you know everything, you can kind of watch it out of order. Mm -hmm. I don't normally, yeah. but if it's like if I'm sitting there and I just like can throw it on, I can zone out and like do whatever I need to do and like zone back in and still know what's happening. Exactly, and I hear you there. Um, so day number eight was a Scooby where you liked the soundtrack better. Did you have an answer for this one? I wrote down Where Are You. I like the soundtrack for Just like... the entire show. Yeah, like I like the soundtrack for it. Most of the songs are like fun. I went specific here. I actually did the Scooby-Doo Goes Hollywood okay. TV special because... I don't very much enjoy that movie. It's just a weird watch. Yeah. And while well, I haven't watched it in years, I remember the music being bomb. So I pulled up the Scooby Doo soundtrack, soundtrack so I could hear a couple of the songs, and I'm just loving it. That's the animated one, right? Yes. I think that's the one of the first Scooby Doo's I owned. Okay. I probably still have it somewhere. Derek, what is a Scooby you hate? But everyone else loves. I don't understand why people like Scooby Doo and Kiss Rock and Roll Mystery. That's fair. I fucking hate that movie. I <laughs> you haven't... and I watched it together, I think, a couple years ago. I remember you trying to get me to watch it. Here's the thing I either watched it with you and completely blacked it out of my memory, or I fell asleep, or we never watched it. I feel like we did. I remember watching it at your house. Okay. And it was awful. And I've only watched it the one time. And I dread the day we have to talk about that movie because I I just did not enjoy it. I don't like the movie whatsoever. Yeah. I don't get why people like it. It's And it's nothing against Kiss. No. I just, I don't enjoy the movie. It's such a garbage like, movie. I remember you putting it on and then that's about it. Like, yeah. I, I truly think I blacked out. You went to sleep. Yeah. I was <laughs> like, I don't want to watch this. What's one that you hate that everybody else likes? <laughs> I put down Scooby and Shaggy do get a clue. <laughs> Shaggy and Scooby do get a clue. Why? I don't like it. I kind of figured you were going to say that, though. I know. I kind of figured. Okay, well, then, day number 10's question was your favorite Scrappy Doo appearance. I hear you laughing. I wrote none. 
Nah, you don't have an answer. So when I was little, when I was a little kid, he was annoying, and as we grew up, he was evil. So I really just never liked him. Okay, so I mean, this wasn't my answer because I, you know, I like Scrappy Doo in the first season of his appearance mm-hmm. of the Scooby Doo Scrappy Doo show. Um, I actually really like his character in the Scooby Apocalypse comics. I was gonna say I haven't seen or I haven't read the Apocalypse yet. Yeah. So I think once I do, I'll like him in that. Right. Uh, yeah, I very much enjoy seeing Scrappy in that, especially because I mean, I already said spoilers, but like he is gonna end up being a good guy in that so it's in a way it's like a very very small redemption for him yeah so it's just cool to see uh what is a scooby that you like from your least favorite series i think one of my least favorite series would have to be the new scooby-doo movies despite Mm -hmm. me having a lot of nostalgia for that show because i watched a lot of those episodes as a kid and I actually just recently rewatched this one. It was the Loch Ness Mess. Okay. Um, they team up with the Harlem Globetrotters because they're out to go to visit um, Shaggy's uncle in Boston. Um, and I just always enjoyed watching that episode. Mm-hmm. I had it, I had it on the Scooby Doo meets the Harlem Globetrotters VHS tape, mm-hmm. so it was just fun to watch. What about you? Uh, so mine because I just said my my least favorite was uh, Get a Clue. Yes. So my favorite episode so far because I haven't seen all the episodes. So my favorite episode so far in there would be High Society Scoob Scooby. Okay. I like it. It's just it's a fun episode. I guess you know. As fun as you can get with that series. And that show is so fun. Shut up. I love that show. <laughs> Question number 12. A Scooby you hate from your most favorite series. Okay, so... Let me guess. Is yours a Mystery Incorporated? Yeah. Okay. So Mine is too. I was just wondering. My answer for this one is The Secret of the Ghost Rig. Only because it's like a random standalone episode that really doesn't have anything to do with the overarc. Out of all 52 episodes, that's the one you chose? Yeah. I chose... Because everything else, like, kind of has something going for it. Not everyone. Okay. Um, I wrote down Scare Bear or Dance of the Undead. That's fair. So Scare Bear, that one, I don't know what was going on with that episode, but I feel like something was off with Mr. E. Because he was in the episode, like, Mm because it all took place at Destroido. Yeah. And I don't know if his voice actor was different, but the way his character was written was weird, and I just didn't enjoy it. And then Dance of the Undead was just annoying. I didn't like the... the I don't remember the name of the villain, but his music made everybody dance like zombies. Yeah. And then it had the Hex Girls in it, which I like seeing the Hex Girls. But then I was screaming at the episode when they did their little tune, and then it made the Planospheric Disc do this weird little twisty turny thing and stuff that I'm just like, come on. I know the Planospheric Disc is amazing, but... Come on. <laughs> but those are my answers, I guess, are Scare Bear and Dance of the Undead. Okay. Uh, what is a Scooby that you still don't understand how it happened? So I took a lot of time to think about this one because I was, I was also kind of looking at, like, other people's answers for this time to get a better idea of what other people were thinking, how to interpret this question. Mm-hmm. I went with the Scooby-Doo Adventures, the Mystery Map movie. It's the puppet one. I don't think I've seen that one. So, they're styled like their pup named Scooby-Doo selves, but they're puppets. Oh. So, if you... Um, I, I'd like to change does, my does answer that, for my least favorite that? thing ever. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, because I'm just thinking about the fact that, like, every cartoon, all their premises and stuff like that, like, yeah, they have, like, different ones, like 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, Shaggy and Scooby-Doo Get a Clue, mm-hmm. but that's not, like, completely unprecedented, I yeah. guess. So, I kind of went with something that, like, has never been done again because they have not done another puppet movie. And them them doing Scooby-Doo Adventures and then having a subtitle being the mystery map, I felt like that kind of implied they were going to do more puppet movies. And then they didn't. And I thank the Lord they didn't. Yeah. Mine was, and I barely remember this movie, but I did Legend of the Phantasaur. Really? Yeah. Why? I generally, I generally like that movie. I but. mean... Okay, I remember kind of liking it, but I remember it being really weird and me getting confused. I was also stupid as a kid, but I don't know. Okay. Out of all, okay. That's a weird answer, huh? Uh, question number 14. Don't be mean to me. I think it's a weird answer, but all right. Uh, question number 14. A Scooby that makes you sad. I did the Midnight Zone because that's the episode where Angel dies. Okay. And that was actually kind of sad. It is. Because, like, I... 
I was always weird about her, and then when she actually like dies, I was I was actually sad. So well, I'll yeah. give them that. That is that's a good one. I went with sad in a different way, not sad as in like sad like you were, <laughs> where like your sad a character died. Sad as in this is happening, and I'm sad this exists. <laughs> kind of like the previous question of like how do you under like. <laughs> I don't even understand how this happened. Um, I chose Scooby-Doo Curse of the Lake Monster. Okay. It's the sequel to the prequel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Scooby-Doo Mystery Begins movie we watched. Yeah. Um, the movie was just awful. Hated it. It was... They're singing in it. Yeah. No, I, I, I remember I, that I just, episode. I, I remember watching it with my dad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and, you know, my dad's just excited for me because, like, it's just a new Scooby-Doo movie. And, you know, he, he loved... He knows that I love Scooby Doo, so like he's like, "Awesome, cool." My son's watching another Scooby Doo movie. Awesome, and here I am, just like I'm embarrassed watching it <laughs> because it's so awful. You're like, please don't think that this is what I enjoy, right? Uh, Derek, what is a Scooby that makes you happy? With this one, I went with like hardcore nostalgia. Me too. I was thinking about like myself as a kid on just a casual happy night, probably at my grandma's house. Nothing to do, like, no school or anything like that. And I'm just in my PJs, hanging out, whatever the case. And I vividly remember watching Which Witch is Witch from Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? That episode, for some reason, just has that nostalgia kick for me. And I don't really know why, because I don't think that episode's all that great for the series. (laughs) But it's it's for something, I just, I love it. Okay. In that way, of just me thinking about my childhood and stuff like that. Uh, What's one that makes you happy? Okay, so... I remember, like, a rainy day, and I grew up with, like, my mom's two best friends and their kids, and we would all just come over to my house every weekend, or we'd all go camping, whatever. And so I remember, like, one day it was raining, and we were sitting in my room, and I think I had, like, a little TV that we had, like, my Nintendo hooked up to and a VHS player, so it didn't really do a lot. Okay. Um, but we would watch a little bit of movies or whatever, and I remember sitting down one day, and we were watching Ghoul School. Oh, that's and that, a good one. And that was like our go-to movie. For nostalgia's yeah, sake, that's a good all one. all of us loved that movie. It was something all the kids could agree on. And I just, so I remember that was like always our go-to movie. And Ghoul School will always kind of have that in my heart. I haven't watched it in years. I have not either. And I'm so, I'm so scared to watch it because I love it so much. You might find that you actually hate it. Yeah, and so <laughs> I think, I truly think that when we have to watch it eventually, if I end up hating it, I might just cry myself to sleep. Like, it'll be real depressing. You're going to quit the podcast because this is breaking yeah. your heart too much. I'll be like, look, it actually, <laughs> yeah. Um, day number 16's question was a Scooby with a personal connection. Okay, ready? I got cute for this one. Okay. I did What a Night for a Night because it was the first one we did for the podcast. Ew. (laughs) (laughs) I told you I got cute for it. I did the movie Scooby-Doo and the Samurai Sword because it was a direct-to-video Scooby-Doo movie that took place in the country of my birth. Fun fact, if I've never brought this up, uh, yeah, I was born in Japan. So, always love me a Japanese-themed Scooby-Doo mystery. (laughs) Derek, what's your favorite sequel? I, you know, it's funny because I remember when I saw some of the other, like, podcasters on Twitter debating this one. And I actually kind of hopped in the ring discussing, like, which ones really count. And there's not a lot. There's maybe only about four or five Scooby-Doo movies that actually count. And one of them I don't even want to think about. Um, So What counts as a sequel? I think the ones that count as sequels would be Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed, Scooby-Doo Curse of the Lake Monster, um, the second Scooby-Doo WWE crossover movie. It Mm -hmm. doesn't say, like, two or anything like that, but, I mean, it's another direct-to-video movie featuring the same people. Scooby-Doo Return to Zombie Island. Unfortunately. Yeah. So, probably about four. So, I think there's four that definitively are sequels. Would you consider the movie the 13 ghosts to be a sequel it could be okay i guess um that's not the one i wrote down that's not why i'm asking <laughs> yeah i wrote scooby-doo 2 monsters unleashed that's what i did too because I... all the rest of them suck so bad and you know this movie is not all that great anyway no. i remember i remember when we did our um guest spot on the month of monsters podcast and we were talking about that movie with scott it was a great discussion. Had a great time talking about this movie, but th- th- I guess like because the sequels just don't have a lot to offer. Th- that movie is more laughable 
if anything. Like, there's a yes. lot of good one-liners, and you can also just laugh because it's stupid. Well, like I said, Curse of the Lake Monster made me feel embarrassed to yeah. even be watching that's it. that's the thing. So, like, it's just going to be I awful. can have a fun time with, with number two, Monsters Unleashed. Like, Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, Shannon, what is a Scooby with your favorite guest star? I went with Sam and Dean Winchester. With the Scooby super, Natural. Scooby Natural. <laughs> okay. okay. Supernatural. I have been watching since I was a child. That's your thing. That's you my love thing. I love me some Supernatural. I remember how excited you were when they did that crossover. Yes. I think I called you the second I found out. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. We're crossing over. Like, it's us. Yeah. Yeah. That's because. That's a good choice. When, when Supernatural. When I found out that Supernatural was ending, I actually physically cried. So, like, something that is still going on that I've been watching for the past, like, 16 years of my life. Yeah. So, the fact that now it's ending, I was just, like... I didn't even consider that one for that question. I do have it as an answer on my list, but not for that question. Um, My answer was actually the Cave Crusader Caper from the new Scooby-Doo movies. So, that's Batman and Robin. Um, and that's really just because of nostalgia. Yeah. It's really all it is. I considered it, but then I remembered the Winchesters. What is a Scooby that aired the closest to the day you were born? So my birthday is April 5th, 1996. So looking at what aired closest to that year, because it was actually nothing new Scooby-Doo wise in 1996. In 1997, the crossover between Scooby-Doo and Johnny Bravo, Bravo Dooby-Doo, um, that one aired on July 21st of 1997. Okay. What's the closest one to your birthday? Mine was Arabian Nights, because I was born January 14th, 1995. Okay. Have you watched Arabian Nights? It's been years. I I have no memory of that movie. I was going to say, not actively. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. So, question 20. A Scooby that made you upset with Scooby-Doo or Shaggy? What doesn't ever make me upset with Scooby-Doo or Shaggy? I was going to say, I'm almost always, like, just disappointed in them. Something that, like, I said not sure yet, but it'll probably be in Get a Clue. Really? Oh, <laughs> well, I had I had a hard episode for this one, actually. Because, like, I'm sure I get upset with them a lot. Like, coming to my head, there's nothing specific. Because hmm. usually they're just... I have a specific just... moment. Okay. Do you want to know what it is? Yeah. It's when they fucking open the chest of the 13 ghosts into oh. all the ghouls I've loved before. Honestly, that's fair. That's very fair. You could have had such a relaxing summer without Fred and Velma. They could have prevented that entire series from happening. Yeah. And no. Instead, you had to spend your summer chasing ghosts like idiots. And then all that gets retconned by the movie special. Yeah. But, you know, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's fine. It's fine. I'm fine. Uh, Derek, what is, what is a Scooby that feels longer than it should? The entirety of the new Scooby-Doo That's movies. What I, <laughs> I said all of the new movie episodes. Yes. <laughs> Every single Honestly, one of them. It's the only TV Scooby-Doo series where the episodes are longer than the 30-minute yeah. mark. Every and it other feels one. feels it. it. It does. It really does. Um, I did specifically at first write down the episode um, with Batman and Robin and uh, the group hypnosis. Oh yeah, um, the dynamic Scooby Doo affair. I think I so. Think yeah, yeah, yeah. That one particularly felt long, but definitely all of those episodes. Uh, every episode. It does not matter which one. No. Even the one I said that I liked, the Loch Ness Mess, like that one. Even they, feels yeah, they like it all feel forever. long. Yeah. So, what is a Scooby that still makes you scared? So I've never been actually scared by Scooby Doo. Okay. But I guess I would say the moment where. Scrappy turns into a giant evil Scrappy. Oh, in the Scooby-Doo movie. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's pretty scary. I think there's a lot of moments in Scooby-Doo that if they happen to me in real life would be terrifying. Uh, Revenge of the Man Crab. Revenge of the Man Crab. <laughs> uh, if I'm flying in a giant plane and my pilot starts having a panic attack, like everything we've recently talked about would actually give me a heart attack in real life. Right. But something that like would just ultimately make me die right then and there would be just this little tiny dog becoming giant and trying to kill me. I feel like that is just, that's that's a little scarier. I chose the Scooby-Doo Project. So that was the parody of the Blair Witch Project. I never watched that. Okay. It's just because the Blair Witch Project, I mean, of course, like now it's not all that scary at all, but like when, we were when younger, you're a kid and you're told yeah. what it is, and then I watched the Scooby-Doo version and it's like, I, I don't know. Just at the end when it's just like the kids and their dog have not been found and we have found the van and they have 
you know, they've been going through the woods and they have Scooby snacks just scattered everywhere. And I'm just like, I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, what's a Scooby with a star who is now dead? I liked the mystery of Haunted Island from the okay. new Scooby-Doo movies. This one was with the Harlem Globetrotters. Now, with the five or six members of the Harlem Globetrotters that are actually in that episode, only one of them is still alive. But, oh, wow. yeah, I actually looked into it because I, I don't really know all that much about them. But it's a fun episode. I always liked seeing the Harlem Globetrotters team up with Scooby-Doo. And, yeah, that was that was my pick. What's yours? Uh, I went with No Sharking Zone with uh, Sonny and Cher because Sonny is since gone. Yes. Um, I do personally prefer Cher anyway, but. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Question number 24, a Scooby you wish you had never seen. I think we might have matching answers. But I don't yours? know because, okay, I got dragged into, and I didn't tell you, but I got dragged into watching Daphne and Velma. With who? With my neighbors. So it was it was on Hulu, oh, no. and there was nothing to watch, and so we threw was it, it on. Was it bad? It's awful it's so so bad the thing is is there's so many stars in that movie like so many people that i know from so many different shows every time i saw a face i was like oh my god i know them this is gonna be a good movie right and it was trash up until the very end and i'm sorry like these people i know these people can act because i've seen them in fucking other shows and i don't know what happened i don't know if when they showed up on set they were like hey you're a good actor but i don't want you to do that because it was just some of the times, like, some of their lines, they would just be like, oh, no, you caught me. What do I do now? And I'm like, you don't, you act better than that. So, yeah, it was just, it was a trash movie all along. Wish I'd never seen it. Uh, can't wait to review it again, I guess. I chose our recent watch of Scooby-Doo Return to Zombie Island. That was also trash. Also trash. I, I uh, everybody, I think, is in agreement that that movie was bad, so... I'm not even going to waste our time talking no. about it. Is Scooby set in another country other than the United States? I chose another Japanese one. I did Big Appetite in Little Tokyo from okay. What's New Scooby-Doo with the giant shaggy Godzilla monster. <laughs> I did Scooby's Luck of the Irish. Okay. I, I, I know why. Because I'm Irish. <laughs> uh, a Scooby that reuses or recreates a monster from an earlier series. I went with Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleashed because I couldn't really think of like I know that other shows have reused monsters, but I couldn't think of any of the titles off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, well, I know I know that that one uses other monsters. Okay. I chose Where There's a Will, There's a Wraith from Be Cool Scooby-Doo. Okay. That one, it mimics the same plot as well as the monster of A Night of Fright is No Delight. Okay. The, there's two green ghosts, essentially. Um, they're at the house for a will, and they have to stay the night, and da 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 da. Yeah. It's pretty much the same story. Okay. Um, so I thought it was a funny gag on the original. Okay. A Scooby with the weirdest monster. This was hard. I went with a pup named Scooby Doo choice okay. because their monsters are always just really weird. That's fair. I chose the cheese monster from Wanted Cheddar or Alive. Yep, yeah, that is a weird one. Um. You don't, I, I, I don't really feel like I need to explain. No, that one did make my list, but I ultimately, okay, I went with, and let me explain it. I went with the caveman from the Night of Frozen Fright. Okay. Because it it was such a, it, it's not a monster. Like, it's a caveman. It was just so weird. It was just a weird thing to happen. Okay. That's, okay. I respect it. I don't know. Day 28's question was, a Scooby that you wouldn't show your children. Okay, this was easy for me. I wouldn't show my kids Mystery Inc. At least not for a little while. Huh, okay. Just because, like, I don't... It's just the dark undertones. I guess I wouldn't necessarily care to an extent, but I don't necessarily want my kids, like, thinking someone got shot in the head at seven. I don't want to have that conversation yet. I actually chose Scooby Natural. Really? I mean, yeah, that's the violence fair. that's yeah, in that that's episode, fair, yes, fair. we don't need the kids and watching that one. And also, the gang got traumatized, too. Yes. So, I get it. <laughs> uh, day number 29 was a Scooby character you have a crush on. This is the one that has stumped me. Really? Yeah. And just because I don't think that way about anybody in Scooby-Doo. <laughs> um, 
I like loyalty in someone, so I'm going to go with the seagull from Revenge <laughs> of the Man Crab. That's fair. I do love me that That's seagull. That's a huge turn on right there. <laughs> that loyalty. Um, cheers. Well, it was a joke. That's how the joke got started is uh, hashtag wet for Fred. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> you have a crush on okay. Fred? When I was little, I did like Fred. Okay. Um, As I grow up and we do this podcast and we start to debunk him, mm-hmm. not so much, but he's always going to be like Fred, you know? Is there a version of Fred that you like more than other Freds in terms of your crush? I guess it would kind of go episode by episode. Where anywhere, anytime that they, like, make Fred intelligent or he does, like, a really cool trap is something that I'm like, wow, you use your brain and, like, common sense. But anything where he's just, like, being an idiot or just being a dick, I'm like, mm, come on, Fred. Like, you can do better than that. Okay. I'm right. invested. I'm surprised that you chose, like, a main character. Because, I mean, side characters I don't really give a shit about. I'm never going to see them again. Why invest my heart? I was heart? kind of trying not to do a side or a main character. I was trying to think of a side character, and there really just wasn't one coming to my head. So I was like, all right, well, my fallback. My plan B is Fred. All right. Well, day number 30, a Scooby with one of the gang's relatives. I put uh, the creature from the chem lab with Daphne's cousin and her incessive eye blinking. <laughs> Okay. (laughs) I chose a non-ironic choice. I went with Vampire Bats and Scary Cats um, from the Scooby-Doo show. This one has Scooby Dumb as well. Okay. Um, I fucking love this episode. You love anything with Scooby Dumb. And Scooby Dumb is a big sell for me. But that episode also is one that I'm just in love with and I have watched it many, many times since childhood. It was almost my choice for the question of like one I never get tired of because Mm -hmm. those two just come... Yeah. Real close to each other with that. What is your favorite ending? I had three answers for this, okay. as a matter of fact. They're all from Scooby Doo Mystery Incorporated. The first one was All Fear the Freak. Okay. So that's the season one finale. Mm-hmm. Just because it's dramatic. It is good. It wraps up everything that we have learned so far, and it sets up so much for the next season. And... I just I, I remember rewatching the last like five minutes multiple times when it first was live and then I watched it on the computer because I just I loved it. Mm-hmm. Love it, love it, love it. The Midnight Zone is there because I think that Angel dying in that episode really set the consequences yes. for the show. Yeah. You know, we knew characters could die, but we had never actually had any of the main characters or any of the supporting characters die yet. So we didn't really think it was possible. And then they fucking did it. And I'm just like, oh, shit. Yeah. Um, The last one I chose was Wrath of the Krampus. And that one just because I like that the gang sets up a fake monster and a fake mystery just to scheme the original Mystery Incorporated out of their pieces of the planetary disc. Yeah. And the ending is nice because then it has them, like, all sitting on top of the mystery machine overlooking Crystal Cove and they put it together and it's shining and they're like, wow, like, it's awesome. Like, Mm -hmm. What do we do now? And again, it's it's setting up more for the show. So like all three of those are really big episodes for me when it comes to endings because I just, I I love them. I love what they do for the show. Yeah. What's your favorite ending or trap? I didn't do a trap. I didn't do a trap because there's so many traps I couldn't think of one. Yeah. I will say off the top of my head, whenever I think of a trap, the one that always pops in is from Mystery Incorporated. It might be be the first or second episode where he does the one with the great white shark no that's the third one with okay. the um no that, that's your least favorite episode apparently the it ghost is, rig it is but it's my favorite trap because okay. it's just so the any, absurdity of it like anything that's so out there is just so funny to me um but my favorite ending is actually i picked a movie i went with zombie island okay. i had to be basic um because it is it, it's just such a nice ending you know they they save the day and it's, it's one of those movies that, like, all the monsters are real. So there are, even though we never see the consequences, it's implied that there are consequences. Mm-hmm. And, you know, this isn't just something fake that you can pull off a mask and it's just end of day. Like, you actually have to do we something. We all know that scene when Daphne and Fred, Shaggy and Scooby are right around that zombie and they pull the head off. Yeah. And they're like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, it's like, you know, 
you can't just go home like at the end of the day you have to fix this right and so when they do it's just such a nice solid ending okay well that was the 31 day scooby-doo challenge I really liked it. Yeah. Um, it was a great idea. Again, credit for this. I was all going to Bradford and Smith. Again, find him on Twitter at Hire Bradford. I it thought it was fun. Think. Yeah, I had fun. I really had to think about some of my answers for this one. And I'm bummed that we didn't like actually do it like on Twitter. So I'm glad that we made up for it with our new non-regular segment on that Kirby Scoop cast. That being bonus snacks. Yeah. Again, guys, this isn't going to be a regular thing. It is just going to be a really random... If we find something thing, fun, if we we'll really do want it. to talk about something, we're just gonna do it, and we did it now. Mm-hmm. So, if you guys want to talk to us about any of our answers, maybe any of your answers, we would love to hear from you. You can find us on social media. That Groovy Scoopcast is on Facebook at That Groovy Scoopcast, Twitter at Groovy Scoopcast, or Tumblr at That Groovy Scoopcast. You can also check out our website at www.thatgroovyscoopcast.com. Or you can just shoot us an email at thatgroovyscoopcast at gmail.com. And with that, we hope that you enjoyed That Groovy Scoopcast bonus snacks. Come back Sunday for a Scooby Snack filled time. Bye, guys. Bye.